Today we're going to be looking at a mod that's favoured by a lot of budget racers, which is cutting a hole in your rear bumper, or removing the rear bumper entirely, in an effort to make it replicate a diffuser. Now, obviously, you should be able to tell that by the fact that high-end time attack cars don't really do this, that it's not going to be as efficient, but let's have a look at just how inefficient it is. So for today's testing, we're looking at a Mazda MX-5. We've got three geometries. We've got a baseline geometry, which is just a regular car body. Then we've got a section with a rear bumper cut out, sort of indicating the rear bumper being removed. And then we have a car with a proper diffuser with a few strikes on the back end of it. Before we look at the flow fields, let's start off with some numbers from the CFD. So all the testing was performed at 180 kilometers per hour. So the cut bumper case, that's the one with the, the bumper removed, made an extra 62 newtons or about six kilograms of downforce compared to the baseline case. And it made 10 newtons less drag. So that's about one kilo. The diffuser case made 181 newtons more downforce, so that's about 18 kilos, and seven newtons less drag than the baseline case. So what we're looking at here is there's about three times as much downforce coming out of the diffuser as there is out of just removing your bumper, and the diffuser reduces drag by about 70% of what cutting the bumper gets out. So we're not seeing huge differences in drag from the baseline case, and in both these cases we're seeing an advantage in drag from the baseline condition. And as far as downforce goes, the diffuser is clearly far superior, but the cut bumper is still giving you something. Now let's have a look at why. Okay, so on our little MX-5 here, we can see that our pressure fields across the top are all pretty much the same as you'd expect. And then if we look from underneath, at the front, the pressure field is again essentially the same through this whole area here. And it's only as we move to the back that it's sort of changing. Obviously the diffuser and cut case will have more expansion volume so it can drive the underfloor volume of the car faster. But we're not really making good utilization of that because we don't have an effective front splitter. Although you can see in all cases we're still getting this sort of low pressure region around the front. Because I've used the stock bumper on the Miata, it kind of just kicks back. So we're not getting full uses out of that. But if we look towards the rear, we can see that there's a big difference in the pressure distributions. Obviously due to the lack of expansion here, we're, we're seeing a sort of high pressure region that's not giving us a, a good downforce hit there. Whereas if we have a look at our cut bumper and our diffuser cases, the, the pressure is nowhere near as high as it is here. The real difference we're seeing is that our diffuser enables us to capture the suction peak caused by accelerating the air around the curve on the underside, which we don't capture so much in our other cases. Now, in the open case, the airflow is still gonna pass through and kick up because of the expansion, but it's just not going to be captured by a surface that can be used to extract force from it. With some streamlines on this point can be further illustrated. If we look in our diffuser case, we can see that we have our flow kicking up and staying attached to our diffuser. We also have a bit of a vortex forming off our straight. Now that vortex is going to provide a degree of low pressure along the start bit, obviously not so much at the back because our straight doesn't follow it but that's going to give us more downforce along there. When our bump is completely removed, we end up with an instant separation here and a big recirculation zone here, which doesn't cause the air to get kicked up as much, so we aren't getting the suction peak that we see there. I left the area open above the diffuser here, and you can see this recirculation zone still being there. So I, I kept the geometry the same between these two and just put in the diffuser. But you can see that this has coalesced this recirculating air and stagnant air into a much smaller area, compared to the open bit where it can just flow out. And we just don't have the control that we do with actually having a physical body panel there. And obviously in the non-diffused, non-cut case, we're not getting much of a kick up of the air at all. Whereas in the diffuse case, we're getting enough to actually form a vortex off the tail end. So a diffuser will give you a performance advantage over a cut bumper, but a cut bumper will give you a performance advantage over running dead stock bodywork. Now obviously this model is quite a simplification I'm just running a standard ride height on stock MX-5 Miata. So if you're looking for a more sort of complicated thing that's specific to your geometry, you really do need to have an analysis performed on your exact car to know the true benefits of what your aero kit is going to have. But this will give you a little bit of an indication if you are just trying to make that baseline decision without any CFD. If you are looking for CFD for your car, check out www.jkfaero.com and check out what design packages are available there. Hopefully I've covered everything. It was only a quick explanation, but then again, it's only a simple topic. 
Uh, thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel. And hopefully, see you next time. Thank you.